I bought the world's cheapest E92 V8 M3. And it was definitely the cheapest for a reason. That reason being, it's a giant piece of shit. That doesn't sound good. The car had been sitting for years when I got it. And really all it took was a new battery to get it running, but it was making a horrific noise. Doesn't sound great. These S65 V8 engines are known for rod bearing failure, and without any known maintenance history, I decided to replace the rod bearings in the last video. Now, what kept me from driving the car is the fact that the clutch line has a massive hole in it. I ordered a new one, but it simply didn't work and actually leaked at the connection with the master cylinder. I thought the car would be done, obviously not done, but I thought it would be done and I'd be able to drive it. That was gonna be the next video, was driving it for the first time. But I don't know what's going on with that clutch line and the sleeve, it's just, it just leaks and leaks and leaks, even though they're both brand new parts. Well, the goal of today's video is to get that fixed and get the car on the road. I have not been looking forward to this, not at all. In fact, I've been avoiding it. The M3 is home. It was towed here. It's delivered here. I want to get the thing running and driving. Technically it runs, but it sounds horrific. <laughs> and it doesn't drive because there's a hole in the clutch line and well, you guys know the story. So I'm hoping today is the day I can get this thing actually driving for the first time I've been putting it off because th this kind of work sucks, guys. Getting under the pedals, messing with lines, there's brake fluid going everywhere. It's just awful and it's gonna suck. To make things worse, I can't get it in here in the garage and up on the quick jacks because, well, I can't push that thing by myself and maneuver it and get it in here because this is a 90 degree turn. I don't know who designed this house, but it's a 90 degree turn to get into the garage and there's no way I can do it. So I gotta work on it outside. Luckily, it's a beautiful day today. Uh, I really don't wanna do this. Since the OEM parts didn't work, I tried this aftermarket stainless steel line made for all variants of E90s, but that clearly wasn't the correct part. Clearly, this will not fit an M3. This thing is incredibly short. That's frustrating. So I got an entire used one, because this is really the only option. Yep, I'm putting used parts on an E92 M3. Brand new, second hand. But at this point, this is my only option. I cannot order the correct OEM line. They simply don't make it anymore. First, I need to get all of the old line out of here. I can install the new used one. All right, the old one's out. I wanna check the codes on the car because I haven't done that at all yet and that brings us into our sponsor, Carly. And this is just a simple wireless OBD2 port connector that connects to your phone with the Carly app. Couldn't be any easier to use. Let's go plug it into the M3. We are all well aware this car has a lot of problems. That's where Carly comes in. And I wanna check this thing out before I take it on a test drive and before I go too far in to fixing, well, everything else wrong with it. Very bad. This is shocking. Engine, six issues, dynamic stability control, two issues, roof issues. I don't know what issues would be up there. Let's clear everything. I'm certain a lot of these are going to reappear, but I need to start fresh with a clean slate. But now that that's done, let me show you some other things Carly can do, which is really, really cool. They can do coating, and there's a lot of coating you can do in these cars, which is sweet. Now with all the cool coating you can do with this car, one of the first things I actually need to coat is the battery, because it's new. So if you look on here, it has all the different types of batteries you can select. 46 AH, 110 AH, AGM, other type. There's all sorts of things. So I need to make sure that I register the battery that I installed in this car, which you have to do on BMWs and newer cars, as silly as it sounds. But the Carly app makes it so you can do it at home. All right, the battery is coated. Let's see what else we can code, because it's almost limitless. So like coating the mirrors to fold whenever you hit lock and unlock, coating it so you can hold the button on the remote and the windows go down or up. Like how sweet is that? So with the Carly app, you can change things like what lights come on when you unlock the car? What happens when you lock it? Does it honk? Does it not honk? 
Do your headlights come on, taillights come on, interior lights, how long do they come on? Does your car automatically lock when you start driving? You can turn off seatbelt chimes, other warnings. The possibilities are really <laughs> nearly limitless. It's an awesome, awesome app. And it can be used for way more things than just simply seeing why your car isn't running right or has a check engine light. You can do all this and more with Carly. Huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video and all the link below, you guys can get your own. So I've got the old one out, I've got the new used one. Let me show you exactly what the problem was. But if you look at the end of this line and then look at the end of this line, you'll notice they're, uh, well, they're pretty different. And it simply doesn't seal on here. Let me show you. This is the brand new line that I bought. Blech. You hear it seeping out? But if I put the used line in there, <laughs> doesn't doesn't leak at all. <laughs> so as gross as that was, it is good news. I think that's going to fix this. Fix the clutch, at least. Now it's a matter of getting it in there and getting it bled. It could be an issue. So I think actually what I'm gonna do is put this slave in there and everything. This also doesn't have the clutch delay valve, so I think overall this is a this is a win. Let's go put it in the car. Easier said than done. This is this is gonna suck. New used slave cylinder is in. Now I have one line left, which is a clip on the master and then a clip down underneath the car. And when this is hooked up, I gotta hook the clutch pedal completely back up. It doesn't have the springs in it, it doesn't have the master, it's got nothing in it. So hopefully it goes smooth. Everything's plumbed up, ready to go. I don't have the foot well all put back together yet because, well, I want to bleed it and make sure I don't have massive leaks like last time. I don't think there will be though. So I'm gonna hook up my power bleeder. Hopefully that makes this really easy. Oh, stupid freaking hood struts. But wait, I gotta say guys, I'm really pumped and humbled to announce that, well, ECS tuning, and Turner Motorsport are hopping on the build. They're helping out with the build. I got a whole bunch of parts to start fixing up this car, a whole bunch of cool stuff that you guys will see in an upcoming video. But first off, I'm gonna install some hood struts so I don't have to use vice grips anymore. Well, that's a hundred times better already. Well, we're not leaking any fluid, so that's a great sign. It's holding pressure. So far, good news, no leaks, and I'm starting to get a pedal. I think we're just about there, and the, the pedal feels good. It's, Well, here goes nothing. I gotta connect the battery, fire it up, and see if it works. But the clutch feels feels good. It does feel light, but I don't know what this clutch is supposed to feel like, so find out in a little bit. Wish me luck. Oh, here we go. Thankfully, the clutch worked flawlessly. I rode through every gear without issue. Now, if you guys remember that nasty engine noise, I noticed the front AC belt was dislodged, so perhaps that had something to do with it. Unfortunately, that's kind of a massive pain as it's a really tight area to get in there to grab either one of the serpentine belts. But in the end, I got it done. Will it fix the problem? Stand by and see.
Well, by golly, guys, it's quiet up here. Now occasionally, like the instance here, you can still hear that kind of weird pitched humming coming from the engine or somewhere. It works. But it seemed the more I drive it, the more it went away. Oh my god, the whole the whole door panel is gonna come off. And actually now as I'm editing this video, I didn't hear the sound at all last time I started the car. Loud is an understatement. Now, while the car sounded really good, it simply droned terribly inside, which is no bueno. That's got to be fixed. Oh my god. I can't drive this thing with these brakes. They are so bad. I also didn't rev the car up high at all because this is, again, a fresh build. I need to get more comfortable with the car before I want to really run the engine out to its limit. I just realized I have no gas. So the brakes work just fine, but they feel horrible, they feel spongy, and it's shaking the whole steering wheel every time I apply the brakes. That's gotta be fixed as well. This thing right now drives like an absolute sack of shit, but the clutch works. But overall, my short off-road test drive went rather well. The car didn't leave me sit, made it back, and clutch, transmission, and engine all seem to be working relatively well. <laughs> Clutch is confirmed good, everything seems to be working there, so I'm going to finish up and tidy up this area down here. That's excellent progress on the E92. It's running and driving, and that noise is pretty much gone. It seems like it is there every once in a while, but it's much, much better. It may have had something to do with belts. I don't know, but if you're curious, all these boxes here, you're going to see a lot of these parts in the next video. I think you're going to like them all. They're, uh, well, it's some awesome stuff.